Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So a little bit more of the car content sort of stuff today and I'm going to be running through my top 10 dream cars of all times. So like if there was 10 cars I had to own, what would they be? Well, there's a slight issue because there's actually 13 in this list and I own one of them. So technically 12. Um, yeah, but I can't find any more. Anyway, we will run in, it's in sort of an order. Uh, the main top three are in order, but then from there below, it's not necessarily in order. Um, so obviously the main one for number one is the Vauxhall Lotus Carlton. Now you'll be like, why do you want a, a Vauxhall? Well, this isn't any of Vauxhall. Basically, I'll cut it a bit short, but if you want to watch the entire story of why I love this vehicle, uh, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch the full video of why I love the Carlton. It was done about a year and a bit ago now, so um, it's really good, really interesting if you just want to know about how cool they are. But basically, it is a Vauxhall Carlton that was uh, 3 litres started out as, and they bought it out to 3.6 litres, put two massive Garrett turbos on it, tuned by Lotus, they did the chassis, they did the hand oh, they made sure the handle better, everything, they did absolutely everything, and made a car that was a four-door, five-seater saloon car that in 1990 could do more than 190 miles an hour. Um, the actual quota top speed is 177 miles an hour. However, that's what Vauxhall had to state to make sure it didn't get banned because it was that first. Um, in fact, it does a lot more than 177. Uh, that's a lie that was only um, put into place to stop the government banning it because of how fast it was. Um, and most car reviewers have had 186, 190, 190 plus out of it when they've been reviewing it. Um, it's never actually been, I do apologize about the rain. Um, it has never actually been fully tested in terms of how fast it will actually go. Um, so, yeah, if it could do 203, it would have accidentally been the fastest car in the world, because at the time, it was the Diablo, uh, which did 202, so... Um, it's peeing it down now. Welcome to England. Anyway, uh, amazing car. I think they look sick. They go like the clappers, and they're so rare, they're just so interesting as well, and I just would... It's the car that I would go for if I was, like, really, really wealthy and could afford it. They're, like, 100 plus thousand now, it's unbelievable. Uh, but I adore the Carlton. Anyway, uh, number two is a car m many of you may never have heard of. Uh, it is the Bristol Fighter T. Now this is a really cool car. Uh, basically it's a Dodge Viper powertrain uh, with a beautiful British sleek aerodynamic body on the top. Uh, and started out life as a natural aspirated 8 litre V10 from the Dodge Viper. That was then tuned to 525 horsepower. Uh, did 210 miles an hour and was first, but it wasn't fast enough because Bristol was like, yes, let's make a fighter that's even quicker. So they made the fighter S that uh, had 660 horsepower and the top speed was increased to around 220 to 240 between that. Uh, it's never been fully tested. Then they decided that that wasn't fast enough and made the car that I would adore to have the Fighter T. Now these cars were made to order and are incredibly rare. In fact, there's believed to be only a handful of actual full fighters of all models in existence. But the Fighter T is the, the bee's knees, the super rare one that there's no nobody knows if one exists because they're that rare, they're going to be locked away somewhere. Uh, it had 1,017 horsepower, or there or thereabouts, from an 8-litre twin-turbo V10. The top speed was a theoretical 270 miles an hour, but for safety reasons, they electronically limited it to 225. This was a rear-wheel drive manual car, and could do 0 to 16 three seconds flat in 2006, between 2006 and 2011, they sold it, uh, the Pfizer. So yes, fast, good-looking, super rare. And a definite dream car because I know I'll never ever in my life be able to buy one because they don't really exist. Um, yeah, so a very interesting car. Uh, on to number three is the Ford GT. Now I don't like proper supercars normally, but the Ford GT is cool. I love the way it looks. I love the way it goes. I even like the way it sounds because the V6 sounds cool. And I just love the fact that it's not a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or something like a Porsche, it's a Ford. 
but outruns Ferraris, outhandles Ferraris, outbreaks Ferraris. It's rarer than Ferraris. It's cooler than Ferraris. And it looks nicer than most of them. A 216 mile an hour V6, 400,000 pound supercar with stupid doors and looks to die for. What more do you want? Seriously. Great car. Had to stop recording for a moment or two, mainly to memorise the rest of the list, uh, the next couple, and also because the rain came down so heavy I couldn't hear myself think, and you wouldn't have been able to hear me. Anyway, so, on to number four. Now, obviously, this car is probably my one of my main attainable dream cars, but I actually own one. It is the Mazda MX-5 Mark One. Um, basically, yeah, good-looking, cool, sports car, they're not rare by any means, but I just love them. They're full of character. They're incredibly good fun. One of the most fun you can have with number plates. Amazing to drive. Fantastic chassis, and they sound really good as well for a four-cylinder engine. Um, yeah, just I love mine. I'm never selling it. It's never going anywhere. Um, it's going to be a permanent car of my hope when I hope to eventually have a somewhat car collection. Um, it's a beast. But yeah, they're amazing cars. Uh, and obviously, I own one. Picture on screen for you now. Right, number five. Now, this is my attainable dream attainable daily driver. The BMW 740i E38. I love these. That I love the way they look. I think they're incredibly good looking cars. I think they're such good looking cars for four-door saloons, which normally don't look that good. Um, not this good, anyway. I love the V8, the 4.4 litre V8. Now, a lot of people say, well, why wouldn't you get a 750? Well, because it's a 5.4 litre V12 and it's got about 20 more horsepower or something, or maybe a little bit more than that. But it's heavier, it doesn't have the V8 burble, like you, you get a decent exhaust system on that 4.4 litre V8 and they sound incredible. The same engine that was in the 540i and the X5 at the time. Um, there, is an, there is an issue with it being a automatic, I would actually have it manual swapped um, if I ever had the money to do so. Um, if not, I would probably just keep it automatic anyway. It's the only automatic car on this list, actually it's part of the 4GT, uh, it's the only automatic car on this list. So, yeah. There's 13 cars on here and all of them are manual except for the Ford GT and the E38. So, um, but I would probably manual swap the E38. So, uh, yeah, awesome car. I love the way they look. Um, and I just want a cool, big, executive German car like that. And I think they're awesome. And they're actually relatively affordable as well. Um, they have like 280-ish brake, um, which wasn't a massive amount, but they did 60 in around six and a bit seconds. So not too bad. Uh, with a manual, it'd actually be slightly faster acceleration because the automatic is a five-speed slush box and they're terrible. Um, and because you've got more gears, you've got shorter ratios, so you've got first, second, third, and whatever, a little bit faster, sort of. Yeah, your acceleration's better with the manual. Um, but anyway, great car, love them. Absolutely love the way they look. And uh, yeah, cool, I do like them. So that's my attainable, dream attainable daily driver. Um, now for the more expensive daily drivers, um, the one that I would have as my dream daily, if I could afford one, which they're very expensive now, is the Ford Sierra Sapphire Cosworth. This 151 mile an hour four door saloon is awesome. I'd have the rear wheel drive one, um, and I love the, these look fantastic, they go fantastic. They're cool, they're rare now. Um, and mainly because they're all stolen and stuck in canals by teenagers on drugs in the 80s and the 90s. But yeah, anyway. Um, awesome cars. I absolutely love them. Um, and they're sleepers because if you looked at it, you wouldn't think it could do 151 miles an hour, would you? No. Uh, so yeah, very, very cool cars. Um, yeah, I do like them. I do like them a lot. And... Yeah, sort of, sort of going to be a ring to this because there's quite a lot of four-door car saloons in this uh, list uh, because the next one is the Alfa Romeo 156 GTA. Possibly one of the greatest looking four-door saloons ever made and has the beautiful 3.2-litre uh, Busso V6 um, from the 147 GTA. Gorgeous car with an amazing looking engine. They make the engine look so stunning. They're pretty nippy and with the rice exhaust system they have a noise 
that will start earthquakes. They sound incredible. Um, but yeah, I do like these a lot. Um, and they're really, really nice. But these are getting a bit expensive as well now. Um, but it's a little bit more attainable than the Ford because there's a little bit, there's a little bit less expensive. So yeah, that's the next one. Number eight on this list is uh, the Mazda RX-7 FD. Now, beautiful car. Um, probably one of the best looking cars in existence because the styling is timeless, it's fantastic. Um, great cars, and obviously it has the famous rotary wankel engine, um, as it's known as. Um, awesome thing, and oh, who, who doesn't want an RX-7 in their life? It would spend more time in a garage, um, broken down, than it would on the road. But I would just love one. I don't know whether I'd have one in yellow as well, because I quite like that, I think they're quite cool. But anyway, love an RX-7. Uh, next is the Mazda MX-5 Mark II. I would actually have a Mark II MX-5 uh, to go along with the NA that I own. Um, however, I'm not that bothered if I didn't have a Mark II. Um, but I would have one. There's a fly being annoying behind me. Anyway, ignore it. You probably can't hear it anyway. Um, so yeah, I would have a Mark II. It would probably be what I would turbo. I'm not going to turbo the Mark I. Um, but I would probably turbo a Mark II, possibly. Uh, but yeah, I just have a nice mat too as well, to be fair, because they're nice cars. But a pre-facelift only, I wouldn't have a facelift. Um, but yeah. That was a bird. Weird noise. Yes, and next is an unusual one. You wouldn't expect this, but I would love a Mercedes-Benz 600 grocer. Um, with a big 6.3 litre V8. Um, a very loud horn, in green, like the one that Clarkson had on Top Gear. I would adore them. I think they're so cool. Just to drive around in one of them would be awesome. And the amount of photos and attention it would get because it's rare and it's expensive and it's really awesome and just so stupid. And loads of dictators used to drive them and they're really cool. Um, I would own one. Um, yeah, they're awesome. I would like one of those as well. Okay, so on to the last couple. We're on to number 11, um, of 13, because there's 13 in this list, not 10, but I couldn't be bothered. I actually know two more that I would get for 15, but 10's just a little bit easier to get, sort of. You don't really put top 15, you put top 10 in videos, and I had a little bit more than that, but it is what it is. Anyway, um, number 11 is the Nissan Skyline GTR R32. I really like these. I don't ordinarily like Skylines. I like an R33. I uh, don't like the R34. Um, but I love the R32. I think it looks fantastic. Probably the best looking of the three. Um, and I just think they're really cool because they're heavily tunable as well. Um, I do like them a lot. Um, and yeah, and this channel was named after the R32 Skyline at one point. Um, but yeah, I would have one if I could afford one, obviously. I can't. Um, but yeah, cool cars. Number 12 is another attainable daily driver that I would love to have, and that is the Mark 1 Skoda Octavia VRS. Um, yes, these cars are awesome. These had a 1.8 litre turbo uh, four-cylinder with like 178 BHP in petrol form. Cool cars, heavily tunable. They're really, really fast when they're tuned. And I just like the way they look. I think they look quite good now. Um, and they're just solid cars, so I would have one of those. And the last one, number 13, is a very unusual one, but if I had to have a car for family things, but not just a, a saloon, but I need a bit more very practical car, it would be a Renault Aventime V6 manual, because these are rare. I think they look quite quirky, and obviously they sound decent with that V6, and they do, they do shift with up to 240 horsepower available. So yeah, I'd have one of those. I think they're cool. Um, I'll just throw in two wild cards if I had to put up to 15. Number 14 would be a BMW 8 series, a classic one, but I'd probably be high up. The, I've not really ordered it necessarily. i will probably be high up. Um, and an Audi S8, the old Vita one. I do like those as well. But obviously, there's a lot more cars I like. It's not just t these 10 that I like. These are just the top 10 of like, I would want to own one. That's first before anything else, if you know what I mean. But yeah, there's a lot of cars I would love, like a diesel Fabio VRS, I'd love one of those um, as well. Um, but yeah, there's just loads of cool stuff. But these are the top 10, 
slash 13. Uh, just from the sort of 11, 12, and 13, and 14, and, and 15, because I did 15, or 16. Uh, the ones below 10 are mainly the wild cards that I would have. They're not the main 10, but they're the sort of ones I would also love to have as well. So to put it like that, they're, they're more the wild cards, shall we say. Um, yeah, so that's my top 10 dream cars. Hope you have enjoyed. Uh, hope you've learned something, obviously. Uh, make sure to check out that Carlton video for me to explain why I adore that car and the story behind it. Um, and I will see you very soon for some more videos, uh, specifically car content, but you never know, there might be the odd gaming in there as well. So obviously, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. It would be my dream for this channel to go somewhere because it's a fun, it's not professional channel and we need them. Um, and... I intend to do a lot of car stuff going forward, so yeah, we need we need the subs and the views and people to watch and support us to be able to do these really interesting videos that I've got planned. Um, but yeah, thanks all for watching, and I'll see you very soon for some more videos. Take care of yourselves, and goodbye. <laughs>